Earlier today, Murrow College of Communication held an event for graduating seniors, but there's new information Murrow grads need to know before the ceremony. And the City of Pullman had a meeting today about the project downtown Pullman. We will let you know the most important details later. From the Northwest Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University, this is Murrow News 8. Welcome to Murrow News 8. I'm Maggie Tollison. And I'm Monique Ledesma. Happy Hump Day. Murrow News 8 starts now. The City of Pullman still has no bids for Project Downtown. The original plan included improving Main Street's infrastructure and sidewalks during the summer of 2024. The City is still looking into why no one has bid on the project and will present options for moving forward in an upcoming City Council meeting. The Murrow staff will now give Murrow students their reader cards for graduation this Saturday, the day of graduation, on the Beasy Coliseum floor. Students can look for Andrea Watson, who will give them their cards. Murrow Center for Student Success also started graduation celebration today with an open house where students enjoyed some light refreshments and snacks. They also got to knock on Edward R. Murrow's CBS station door for good luck in their careers. WCU is hosting their annual holiday celebration this Saturday from 11 to 3. There are letter and card making stations and decorated photo booths. Santa Putsch will even make an appearance from 1 to 3 to take photos. The event is free, but non-perishable food donations are encouraged. The celebration will be at the Lewis Alumni Center. And if you're looking to get into that holiday season, tomorrow is the night for you. Living Faith Fellowship Annual drive through Live Nativity starts tomorrow night at 6 p.m. The Nativity will also happen Friday and Saturday night at the church on South Grand Avenue. Also, be aware of possible traffic downtown because of that event. There's been some nicer weather here on campus over the last couple of days. We'll let you know if that trend will continue into graduation weekend. Earlier this week, we were expecting some snow this weekend. I know some families will be traveling to Pullman for graduation, including my own and Austin's. Well, Austin, should we expect some snow this weekend? Do our parents need to take extra precaution while driving up to Pullman? Thanks, Monique. Yeah, a little bit of fool's gold here today because it was a little bit warmer and, you know, we're going to see some, some cloudy skies for the rest of the evening, maybe a little bit of sprinkled showers throughout uh, the evening, but nothing major. Obviously going to cool down a little bit as we move into the evening. Some winds later on tonight as well. If you are going out, make sure to put on a jacket. Why do I say it's fool's gold? Well, let's take a look at tomorrow. You see that rain snow mix coming as we move closer towards the weekend, closer to graduation day. Temperatures in the low 40s, high 30s. And again, you see that wind 15 to 20 miles per hour tomorrow. Now let's look across the state of Washington here on Wednesday. And as you can see, we're actually kind of lucky here in the southeast part of the state. There is pretty much rain and a rain snow mix throughout the entire state here on Wednesday. Now let's quickly look at the five day forecast as well. And you can see those temperatures slowly getting a little bit cooler as we move towards the weekend. Saturday, that is graduation day. Temperatures right around freezing. We are probably going to see a little bit of snow, not a lot of accumulation, but we're gonna see some snow. So maybe have your graduation parties inside. 
rather than outside. As you can see, it'll get a little bit warmer as we move into the start of finals week. Back to you guys over at the desk. Thanks, Austin. Our reporter Ethan spoke with the director of basketball operations here at WSU, but his story to success has an unexpected twist. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, you, your football buddy, your football buddy, you, the boss, the boss's boss. If one in three adults has pre-diabetes, that means it could be you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker. On your left. Your cat jogger. Or you, your co-pilot. Your co-pilot's co-pilot. While one in three adults has pre-diabetes, with early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. People only really know the head coach and the players on a basketball team. But for the men's team here at WSU, some of the most important people are the ones you don't know. It's been incredible that I have the opportunity to you know, be the director of ops here at Washington State. For Alex, becoming the director of ops at Washington State came with many challenges because he faced a life-altering event at the age of six. I got diagnosed with this thing called Chiari malformation. There's too much tissue like at my brainstem from what, the point where my brainstem connects to my spinal cord and it was just blocking my spine from getting spinal fluid and which was causing, causing the uh, curvature in my back. That's when I had my first surgery and that was the brainstem surgery um, just to try and clear up kind of all the blockage that was happening by my spine. The surgery was a success, but on January 6th, 2016, Alex had a second back surgery, which was a spinal fusion, which taught Alex a lot about himself. Back surgery, I think both of those experiences just kind of just gave me kind of just a leg up in life, to be honest, early. Alex then followed a dream and went to Washington State. I was able to create a really, you know, strong friend group right off the bat and some of my best buddies still today, and they really helped me through a lot of the early times. But while creating all the great relationships, Alex decided during the pandemic to reach out to two WSU coaches, offering his help. Rolovich at the time and uh, Coach Smith just kind of with the same email, like, hey, this is my name, this is my story, love Washington State, like, I just want to help out with athletics, so if you guys have any opportunities, just, you know, to, to let me know. Mike Orlich, the grad assistant at the time, he sent me an email, um, you know, a couple weeks later saying, like, hey, we've got a position as a manager, like, if you want to do that, and you know, did like a questionnaire or something, filled out a little interview, and, you know, ended up kind of getting the job. After one year with the program, Alex's role significantly increased. Become the head team manager my senior year and travel with the team and be kind of a video coordinator for the team and handle a lot of the team's film, especially game film. And, um, you know, it was just such an amazing experience as an undergrad here. During his senior year, Alex decided he couldn't see himself stepping away from the game. So he decided he wanted to be a GA. A uh, text from Coach Smith just saying, hey, would you mind being a grad assistant at, at University of Hawaii? Alex didn't hesitate for a second. And after a few interviews, he got the job at the University of Hawaii. It was special and that whole program made me feel comfortable from day one, especially the assistant coaches there. They really kind of took me under their wing and we were able to really create a really strong family dynamic in, in that office every day. And, it was just really fun going to work every day, just knowing I was going to be able to work with them. And, you know, they were really building me up to, to be able to do the things that I wanted to do down in life. And but after one year at Hawaii, Alex got a text from a familiar face asking him to come back to WSU. I got a text from Coach Smith, you know, I need the director of ops. Would you like to be the uh, you know, next director of ops at Washington State? And I remember I asked him, I was like, right now? And then he was like, yeah, right now. And obviously it was, it was a dream opportunity. Alex then accepted the job and made his way back to Washington State as the next Director of Basketball Operations. You know, I'm just super grateful for the opportunity from Coach Smith and his staff and 
know, a lot of staff that I've already worked with as when I was an undergrad here. So really it was just a kind of a perfect fit. And if I could have dream, dreamed it up, I guess it kind of would have been this opportunity. So, you know, super, super uh, glad it all kind of worked out. And you know, it's just been amazing kind of being back here, being able to, to do what I do. Speaking of Alex and the men's basketball team, they are back in action tonight at seven when they take on UC Riverside. The Cougs are six and one on the season and UC Riverside is four and five. The Cougs are coming off a 71-61 victory on Saturday versus Portland State. The Cougs, UC Riverside, excuse me, is coming off a 68-62 victory over North Dakota. The game will be at Beasley, but if you can't make the game, it will be live on Pac-12 Network. Last night, the Cougs took on South Dakota State and came away with a 69-64 victory. The team was led by Estera Tuhina, who had 18 points and four rebounds. Bella Mercatete added 15 points and seven rebounds. And freshman Eleanor Villa had 13 points to go along with four steals. The Cougs improved to their, their record to 10 and one and will next take on the Washington Huskies Sunday at 1 p.m. in Beasley Coliseum. For Cougar Volleyball, they'll be in action tomorrow in the Sweet 16 against number one seed Pitt. Pitt is 27 and four this year and has seven straight win, uh, straight matches, including two tournament victories against Coppin State and USC. This is the first Sweet 16 match for the Cougs since 2018. So far this season, WSU is seven and four against the top against top 25 ranked opponents. The winner of tomorrow's match will face off against the winner of Louisville and Creighton. Tomorrow's game is at 11:30 p.m. Pacific time, a.m. Pacific time. It will be, it'll be broadcasted on ESPNU. In football, Washington State is working towards a scheduling agreement with Texas Tech, which would, be, which would begin next fall. The agreement would be part of a scheduling package with WSU, Texas Tech, and Oregon. That would continue into the 2030s. The last time that WSU played Texas Tech was 1964 here in Pullman, with Texas Tech winning the matchup by a score of 28 to 10. Here's a look at the 1964 game with WSU legend Keith Jackson on the call. Cougars didn't make it. They're second down and inches short of the first down. I guess we talked a little too soon about the ball starting to bounce the Washington State way for a change. Deep pitch to Williams. He got a good block in there from somebody. Along the sidelines, cuts in and drives and gets the first down easily to about the 13. WSU would play Texas Tech next year on Saturday, September 7th here in Pullman. The Cougs currently scheduled to play San Diego State that Saturday, so that game would likely be moved to another date. With the fall semester coming to an end, after the break, we'll let you know what that means for the future of Murrow News 8. It's okay to be scared. Hmm? You don't have to be so strong. Strength is not optional. This is my mother, my purpose. Real muscle is lifting her spirits between bedpans and bad news from doctors that doubt her strength. Strength is buried in bills, managing meds, and swallowing those moments of, Mom, it's me, your daughter. Remember, my strength is super, but I'm still human, right? Look who's here. There she is. Thanks for your patience. How you feel? If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community or call 1-877-333-5885. Since the semester is ending, our final show as a group will be on Friday. Next semester, new students will be taking over the broadcast. So Ethan, what, what kind of memories do you have from this semester? I would say my favorite memory from this class was watching Brendan get up <laughs> From that seat Austin's <laughs> currently sitting in and walk to the weather wall. I think that might have been that was an old time my uh, favorite moment of the semester. Yeah, that was a good one. Well, we'd love to hear what your favorite memories of this semester were. If you could leave those down in the comments, we'd love to see them. Thank you for watching our broadcast. And if you've missed any of our previous shows, you can find them on our YouTube channel. Have a great night.